Hi everyone, welcome back. At WWDC this year, Apple quietly released a new open source tool called Container, a lightweight command line utility for running Linux containers directly on Apple Silicon Macs. Now that macOS 26 is here, we're gonna look at what it is and isn't and walk through how to get a basic container up and running. Container consumes and produces Open Container Initiative compliant images, which means it speaks the same language as Docker, Podman, and most other modern container runtimes. So yes, for many basic use cases, it could easily replace Docker Desktop or tools like Kalima. You can build, run, and manage containers locally without needing a big heavy VM running in the background. But before you un uninstall Docker Desktop or move on from your custom setup, let's be clear about what it isn't, at least not yet. This isn't a full-blown replacement for Docker Desktop, Kalima, or any mature container environment. There are still some rough edges. First, there's no Compose support, so molten container workloads that mimic complex production environments are much more difficult, or in some cases, impossible to run. Second, there's no way to route traffic between a container and an application on the host that's listening on the loopback address. In plain terms, if you've got a database running on your Mac at localhost, your container won't be able to talk to it. Third, memory ballooning isn't fully supported properly yet. When a container releases memory, that memory is returned to the VM hosting the container, but it's not yet returned to the host. So if you're running high memory workloads, you may end up needing to restart your containers periodically to recover system RAM. And finally, if you're running on a version older than macOS 26, there are some networking limitations. Full functionality is only available with macOS 26 Tahoe. For more details, check out Apple's technical overview document linked in the description below. So, why bother? Well, one, because the performance is ridiculous. Containers start in under a second and run with minimal resource overhead. Two, because Apple, a company not exactly known for working in the open, is developing an open source tool that has real broad utility for developers on its platforms. And three, because it hints at something bigger inside Apple, a broader tool chain or framework that relies on fast, secure, isolated Linux environments as building blocks for development or deployment on macOS and maybe, hopefully, one day, other Apple platforms. Under the hood, Container uses Apple's Swift-based containerization framework, which itself ties into the broader virtualization framework built into macOS. Each container runs its own lightweight Linux VM with its own dedicated IP address. That isolation improves the privacy and security of the containers, and the VMs themselves are heavily optimized for performance and low memory usage. When you install the tool, you get a CLI interface plus a background launch agent, that agent exposes the APIs for managing containers, networks, and images, while some helper processes handle image management and virtual networking. When you start a container, a separate runtime helper spins up to manage that specific instance, effectively giving each container its own secure, self-contained environment. So, let's take a look at it in action. If you already have the tool installed, stop it first with the container system stop command. And then to uninstall it, but keep your user data, you can run uninstall container.sh minus K. And put in my password. And if you wanted to delete everything, including the user data, you can just use minus D. So now we're gonna head over to the releases page. Uh, the link is in the description of the video below. And we'll just download the latest version here, the signed package. We'll run that, run that. And we'll just install it using the defaults and I'll give it my password again. There we go, so the package was install, installed successfully. So now to check that it's working, we can run container dash dash version. And there it is. And we can see what commands are available to us using dash dash help.
If you hadn't previously installed the tool, uh, you may be prompted to also download a Linux kernel. You can just accept the default there and it'll download uh, and, and set itself up. So now that we've got the tool up and running, let's create something simple. So I'll change into my development directory and we'll make a new directory here called web test. And we'll open that up with VS code. And we'll create ourselves a Docker file to run a simple little container here. There we go. So all we've got from here is we're going to build an image from the Python Alpine image. We're gonna set our working directory to the slash content directory. We're gonna install the curl tool. Uh, and then we're going to create a basic HTML page there to our server to host. Um, and then we're gonna start up the HTTP server inside the container on port 80. So we're gonna then build our container here. Actually, before we do that, we'll just go into the directory. So then I'm gonna use our build command. So you'll see here that this container build command looks exactly like the Docker build command. So we've got the container build, We've got our tag, which we're gonna call web test, and we're gonna call, we're gonna build from the, the Docker file locally. Ah, there you go. So I haven't started the container service yet. So make sure we've started it up with container system start. And this will start all the background processes and uh, XPC agents and stuff that we need to actually do a build process. Okay, there we go. So now the service started up. We can try again with the build command and there we go. So now we're getting our build image. So the way that it actually does a build is uh, it creates its own build container, uh, which then does all of the building process. And so now we can see that I've successfully built my latest uh, version of my web test container. And we can check that by doing container image ls. And there we go. We can see my web test container is there. So now we can just do a run. So we'll just do a basic run command, make that a little bit easier for you guys to see. Uh, do a run, so again, very similar to the Docker run command. So we've got container, run, the name of the container, and we've got the detach and RM, so it will detach and remove the container once we, uh, once we exit it. Uh, and we're gonna run from the web test image. So off we go. Okay, so now we've got the container up and running. Let's have a look at container ls. And we can see there now that we've got my web server running with the latest uh, web test. Uh, and if again, I make that a little bit easier to read for everybody. And we can see here it's running on 192, 168, 64, 3. So now let's jump over to Safari and let's take a look there. And there you go. You can see our basic hello world image right there. So that's pretty cool. Um, but let's do something a little bit more interesting uh, and let's map some ports from our host and some files from our host as well. So let's just stop our container here. There we go. And we can tell that it's stopped by looking there. So we can just see our build kit container now is running there. Um, and then what we're going to do, let's go back to VS Code. Let's go back to VS Code here. Uh, and we'll create a new file. So we'll recreate our HTML file from the Docker file uh, inside our directory. And we'll just say, instead of saying hello world, we're gonna say hello mapped file. So we'll save that there. We'll go and edit our Docker file so we won't give it uh, the index.html file as part of the build process anymore. And then we will rebuild the container. And then we will run with a slightly more complex run command. So again, just make this a bit easier for you guys to see. So what we've got here is we've got our container run and then we're going to map our volume, so we're gonna map from our web test directory, from our working directory here, to the content directory. 
Uh, and then we're gonna map port 8080 on our local host to port 80 on the container where the web server is running. Um, and then we're gonna give it all the same commands we gave it before. So let's start that up. And there we go. And again, we can do container ls and we can see that it's up and running again. And now if we jump over into Safari and rather than being on our regular directory, we can just go to localhost port 8080 and there it is there. So we can see there that now we've got a basic container which has a mapped file and is port forwarding from our local host, which lets you do a little bit more complex work uh, with, with, uh, with the tool. So there you go. Apple's new container tool might not replace Docker for everyone, but it's already a strong option for developers who just need fast, lightweight, OCI compliant containers on macOS. It's fast, it's open, and it's Apple finally giving developers a native way to run Linux containers without all the baggage. Thanks a lot for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.